Welcome to the Jaron Jarvis channel. I am Jaron Jarvis. Today, I would like to introduce to you, I finally commented first on a YouTuber's channel. I'll start off by saying I don't spend that much time on YouTube. Okay, probably more time than I should but, is that really unusual? With smart technology at our disposal every minute of every day, I could have Alexa or Google search me up a sweet video at any point I want. It was on a chilly Friday morning before work that I decided to finally do it. I had seen people attempt it before, but I never really tried myself, to be the first to comment on a YouTube video, before anyone else. I know what you're thinking. That's pointless. You know what? You're absolutely right. Still, boredom had sunk in and who knows, maybe I'd get some likes or online recognition. At about 6 o'clock in the morning, I sat down at my computer in my bathrobe with a hot cup of coffee, and clicked on my saved YouTube tab to begin my attempt at the impossible feat of having the first comment on a popular YouTuber's video, as soon as they uploaded. For about 30 minutes, nobody under my subscription list was posting anything new. I sighed loudly and leaned back in my computer chair, rubbing my eyes before my attention turned over to my Facebook for a moment. I leaned forward and scrolled through my news feed, clicking through statuses and reading ridiculous political arguments. After a few minutes, this got tiring however, so I decided to just forget about it and just start getting ready for work. But, as I stood up from my computer chair, my phone went off with a ding. I picked it up, and checked the notification window. My favorite YouTuber just uploaded a new video. I said to myself, screw the computer. And switched to YouTube on my phone, jumping immediately to the comments box and noticed zero comments still. Yes. I was about to be the first. I typed precisely that. First. I laughed to myself about the pointless nature of my post. Who cares who's the first to comment? I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Guess I just thought it would be funny. Of course, there wasn't much to follow up on with this ridiculous activity so I put my phone down and got ready for work. I poured some extra coffee into my thermos and hoppered into my car. I laughed to myself again. What if I'm the first one to work? I actually was. This was looking to be a good day honestly. I waited outside for the keyholder, Devin, and looked at the comment thread where I was first. My hands were cold and I was shivering from the frigid temperature of the breezy winter morning, but I was feeling warm inside. My warmth didn't last though. Underneath my comment was the strangest reply. The reply was from someone named, Hobo Cafe. Second. This coffee is really good. See you when you get home. I nearly dropped my phone. What an odd response to my comment. Surely, they're trying to scare me. Right? At work for the rest of the day, I was very quiet. I kept going back to the comment, and even tagged others to see if they would try helping me ask this guy what he meant, but any time I mentioned the comment, nobody would reply back. They either weren't interested or thought it was a prank or something. Other than the YouTube fiasco, work was uneventful. I was out by 3 o'clock, said bye to Devin and hopped into my driver's seat. Just as I started my vehicle, my phone dinged again. This time, it was an email right to my personal Gmail account. I froze, before the cold winter afternoon air could even get to me. It was from Hobo Cafe. Are you kidding me? The email went like this, you think you've achieved greatness for being the first to comment on that video? I've been waiting to snap like this. You foolish keyboard warriors and mindless media zombies think life is a game. Fine, I'll play. Just wait until you get home, first. My stomach began turning. What was happening, and why was it happening? Who is this hobo guy? I felt like replying to his email. It was a stupid little thing I wanted to do. Harmless fun, why are you getting so mad guy, or girl? I don't actually know anything about this person. I didn't email him back though. I finally calmed down and decided it must just be a prank. There's no way this was serious, who would get that angry about an innocent little YouTube joke. I stopped at the gas station before I went home, honestly racking my brain the whole time. This whole situation was absolutely insane, and it escalated so quickly. 
all because of one stupid comment. I pulled into my driveway at about 3.35. I couldn't help but sit and stare at my house for a few before actually going inside. I mean, wouldn't you wonder if maybe this person was serious? Was his plan to just scare me online, or did he actually want to hurt me in real life? Or, even kill me? I walked slowly up to my front door, heart racing in fearful anticipation. Hobo Cafe had successfully instilled fear in my mind, I have never been more scared than I was that day. The idea of him possibly sitting in my house, ready to attack was honestly horrifying. I stopped at my front door, and looked down at the welcome mat below me. My foot brushed something below as I walked up to the top step. A manila envelope was resting there, with blue pen scribbled on the front. I picked it up and observed the whole thing. What was odd about it, was there seemed to be no mailing stickers or addresses written on it. Just the word first hastily written, nearly undiscernible. I took a deep breath and opened it, obviously suspecting that Hobo was behind the mysteriously package. Inside was lined paper folded in two, torn from a notebook or something. I unfolded the paper, and read silently to myself, over my beating heart. Dear first, I had to run out and do some errands. Your front door is unlocked so go right in, I'll see you soon. This was all on Friday, there was not another word from my stalker that evening. And matter of fact, it is now Wednesday the following week and I haven't heard from Hobo Cafe again. Not yet. Every day has been a test of the nerves. The prospect of what he potentially could be up to, is enough to send me into a paranoid, downward spiral. I'm losing sleep, and watching over my shoulder. I'm no longer in a rush to be first, 